Hello everybody, happy Persember to those who celebrate. Last time I talked to you guys, it was November, it's December now. As of filming this, maybe as of when I'm posting this, depends on how fast I can edit, we are officially one week away from the Percy Jackson TV show on Disney Plus. That's like such a crazy sentence to say. We've been waiting for the show for like three years. It's just wild. It's crazy that we're here right now. You know what I mean? So yeah, a week away from the show. Today is also Taylor Swift's birthday. I have oh, my Taylor Swift cup that I'm drinking out of over here. Basically, this video today is going to be just a general Percy Jackson update. Last Percy Jackson video I made was November 27th. I edited the video all day, posted it, go on Instagram, and like, there's new footage the day I posted a YouTube video. A couple of people commented about it, being like, are you gonna make a video about this footage? At the time, I was like, no, because the clip was only like 30 seconds and it only showed us a couple new things, but it's been long enough now. It's been like two weeks or something and a bit has happened. So I'm just gonna do a general update on things. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'll start out with the new mini trailer we got a couple weeks ago. It mostly showed a lot of the same footage, but there were a couple of new things that were super fun. We got to see more camp footage. We got to see more cool like fight scene choreography. The most notable thing from this little trailer that we saw was Percy getting claimed by Poseidon. Huge, literally and figuratively. When I saw it, I was kind of shocked. I don't know if it was just me, but when I read the book and I pictured, you know, Percy getting claimed with a little trident over his head, I always pictured it to be like a tiny little trident. Imagine like the little diamond that's above a Sim's head, about that size. That's what I was picturing when I read the book. So to see the trident be like huge, it's kind of jarring, but I love it. I think the shot's beautiful. I think it looks fantastic. I love the fact that from what we can see in that shot, Annabeth is the only person on the beach with him. It just makes the moment a lot more intimate between the two of them. It makes it in a way, a sort of a bonding experience, I guess, between the two of them. So I like the fact that from what we see, Annabeth's the only one there. We also get to see a little bit more footage of Grover getting dragged by the flying shoes. And we also got to see the trio getting chased by Cerberus. So throughout the past couple weeks, both the cast and like the crew and Rick and Becky have been doing interviews and stuff and they've released some more information about the show to us. So that's what we're gonna get into now. So for starters, the show is not meant to take place in the 2010s. I can't remember if there's like a specific decade that the book takes place in, but it's not going to be really in any specific sort of decade. What they said they're going for is it's going to be modern. Like it's going to feel modern like today, but at the same time, still going for a timeless sort of vibe, which I love because every time someone talks about the show, I feel like they are constantly keeping the longevity of it in the back of their minds. Every time they do something, every step they take, they're always thinking ahead for the show. They're always thinking about, okay, if we do this, what are we going to have to do in three years? They're in it for the long haul. And I love it. I love to see it. Some news, at least this was big news on Twitter. Um, Argus is cut from the show due to budget reasons, just like having to CGI, all the eyes onto him would have been a lot. But also that doesn't mean that he's never gonna be in the show. They said it's very possible that he can show up in later seasons. And when that news got shared on Twitter, at least the side of Twitter I'm on, people were really freaking out. This was like the first time I saw people starting to like doubt the show, be like, oh, it's not gonna be that book accurate then. And I was like, whoa, pause. When I saw that news, I was like, who is Argus? <laughs> I like forgot who that was. I haven't read, I should really reread The Lightning Thief this week. I haven't read The Lightning Thief in like over a year, maybe two years. So the memory is a little hazy here and there, okay? When I saw the tweet, I was like, who the fuck is Argus? What the fuck? I don't remember who that is. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay. He's like not really that significant. Like it would have been cool to see him, but the fact that he's not in it doesn't mean the show is gonna be awful, not book accurate at all. People on Twitter just got really mad about it for no reason. 
I don't know. It was interesting. It was an interesting day on Twitter. The soundtrack for the show is going to be released on December 22nd. I'm really excited. Today, as of December 13th, the Percy Jackson series posted like a little one week away clip and it sounded like the score was playing in the background and it sounded epic. I'm a big score person. I like listening to like scores of movies like Interstellar, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is a big one that I've been listening to a lot recently. And I'm not talking like the soundtrack, although I do love soundtracks. I'm talking like the score. So like Oppenheimer score, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes score, um, Spider-Verse score fantastic i love listening to the spider-verse music so i'm very excited to be able to add percy jackson to that list another piece of news that we got is that grover and aries are going to have a scene together that's not in the books but when rick talked about it he said that this scene is so important he wishes it was in the books and that brings up like a really interesting topic that has been talked about in a couple interviews by uh, Rick, by James Bobbin, who's the director of the first two episodes, by the showrunners, etc. Translating this book series into a live action show allows a really interesting sort of area to play with. When you read the book, the book is told from Percy Jackson's perspective. You're in Percy Jackson's head, you're only seeing what Percy sees, you don't get to see anything else that happens. But in the show, it doesn't have to be just Percy's perspective. Like there's other things that can happen and will happen that Percy may not be witnessing that we as the audience will get to see, which I think is really fascinating. So for example, this scene with Grover and Ares, I have no idea what it's gonna be about, but there are some people that have seen the scene between Ares and Grover. Uh, Rick obviously says it's super important. People say that they adore it. Uh, and that they watch it like over and over. And so it's very possible that there's going to be a lot of stuff that's gonna be added into the show that isn't in the book when you read it, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening in the book. We, as the readers, just don't see it because we're reading Percy's perspective. But now we're not readers, we're an audience. So they can show us things that Percy's not seeing. While the trio is out and doing their quest, we can jump back to Camp Half-Blood and see what's going on at Camp Half-Blood, which is pretty cool. And that's a very exciting prospect for people like me, like some of you guys who have read the books and know the book really well, that still leaves open stuff that we're not gonna expect, stuff that we haven't seen before. It still leaves like excitement for us, which I love. And also probably the biggest news to me, for me personally, biggest news that we got, there will be sally and poseidon flashbacks everybody cheered everybody clapped guys if you've been following me here on other platforms whatever if you've watched any of my other percy jackson youtube videos you know that one of the number one things that i want to see desperately is flashbacks between sally and poseidon i could watch a whole show of them falling in love actually give me a whole entire rom-com of just sally jackson and poseidon falling in love I have wanted Sally and Poseidon flashbacks so badly. And the fact that I know that we're getting at least one, maybe more, but at least one, I'm so happy. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Speaking of flashbacks, someone who has seen the show already has said that the flashbacks between Percy and Sally, like young Percy and Sally, are so sweet and like emotional. Like they make you cry, which I'm a big crier. I cry super easy. So I'm sure I will be crying when I see them. They said that there's like flashbacks later on in the series that are really moving. So I'm very excited for that. We also got a first look at the Oracle, which looks really scary. <laughs> and we got a first look at the Fates, which is super cool. I was wondering if Fates were going to be in the show because we hadn't seen them and no one had really talked about them, but I kind of love them. Like <laughs> we got some posters of Walker, Leah and Aryan. And then we got posters of the monsters. We've got Electo, we've got the Minotaur and we have Medusa. Medusa? Medusa's that bitch. This character poster, it's good. It's good. <laughs> like I unfortunately will be standing Medusa in the show. Sorry, sorry. Also, like I said, the cast has been doing interviews here and there with a bunch of people. A lot of the interviews haven't been released yet. So I'm sure once I post this within the next week, we're gonna get so many interviews coming out and there's gonna be a lot more information revealed, but whatever, you know, you can only keep track of so much. You can only keep track of so much. It's almost overwhelming, like the amount of news and stuff we're getting from Percy Jackson. Cause I feel like we went so long, literally living off of crumbs. Like if you go back and watch 
some of my older Percy Jackson videos, I say in those videos like, oh, we're living off of crumbs right now. We really have nothing yet of the show. And now here we are getting like overwhelmed with footage and information and content. And the show comes out in a week. <laughs> it's like, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's really hard for me to wrap my brain around, honestly. But so the cast has been doing interviews. They've been um, talking a bit and I'm obviously not going to recap everything that they say in all these interviews. You guys can go and watch those interviews for yourself, which I definitely recommend. They're very fun to watch. The kids are great and the kids are super passionate about the show, which is just such a huge bonus. But I want to highlight a couple things. One thing I want to highlight is Leah was talking about Annabeth and what she did in terms of like taking steps to be Annabeth in the show. Um, and she said two things that I really loved. So I'm going to talk about one of the things she said is, she read The Lighting Thief, like after she got the role, she's read the book before obviously, but once she got the role, she picked the book up again and she read it once to get the story, to refresh the storyline in her head. And then she read it again, really paying attention to everything that was happening to Annabeth in the book and specifically Annabeth, because the book, like I've said before, it's Percy Jackson's perspective. It's not anyone else's point of view. It's just Percy Jackson's point of view. So when you're playing a character that's not Percy Jackson, it might be a little bit hard to like figure out what is this specific character feeling in this scene? What's going through this character's head? And so she reread the book a second time, like immediately after the first time, really picking up on Annabeth and what she would be feeling and who are the people around her in certain scenes? Who are the people that she trusts more than anything? What are her relationships with this character and this character? And what is she, 13? <laughs> like, not only is that really dedicated commitment to a role at such a young age, but it's also a very smart and mature way of thinking when it comes to a character and how you're going to portray that character. It's very impressive that that sort of answer and that sort of thought process came out of a 13 year old. If she is 13, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume she's 13. Maybe she's 14, I don't know. But it was just, I was like, oh, okay, okay, girl. And then she said another thing where she, I think someone asked her, the question was like, what's something you relate to your character or something like that, I don't know. But she talked about Annabeth and the vulnerability of Annabeth and like, you may not see it. She's kind of, you know, she's hard in the eyes. She has a hard exterior. She doesn't always let emotions show, especially not in the first book. She's very, she's got a very hard exterior. She's a very tough girl, but there's still a lot of things that happen that can frighten her. And she does have a lot of vulnerability. And the way that you can, you can tell when Annabeth is being vulnerable is through her eyes because she doesn't let it show anywhere else. That was Leah's response. I was like, dude, what? <laughs> why are you Why are you so good at this? This 13 year old girl playing Annabeth has more media literacy than a lot of like 30 year old men that are gonna watch the show and attempt to critique her. Sorry, not sorry. If you guys follow my videos, you know I'm a huge supporter of Leah being Annabeth. I think that she is absolutely fantastic for the role. I get a lot of comments both on here and on TikTok about her people trying to justify why she's not good for the part because she doesn't have blonde hair or gray eyes or isn't white. And I think it's any argument. I've never seen a, a good argument. No argument has been good because there is not an argument. Leah is Annabeth and she's so dedicated to the character. She's so dedicated to the show as a whole. She's going to, I just know she's going to be fantastic. I already knew she was going to be fantastic, but hearing her responses to these questions, hearing how eloquent she is for such a young age, she's so mature in like her thought process when it comes to this job of playing Annabeth. Annabeth cannot be in better hands. And that's why Leah was casted. There's nothing else to say. That's just how it is. I'm, I'm so excited for her and I love her. And last but not least, last thing I'm gonna update, cause like I said, there's a bunch of other stuff I'm sure, but you know, I can only keep track of so many things. I kind of just list off the things that I felt were important. But the last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with is Logan Lerman left a really sweet message for the kids. You can go and find it on Twitter, I'm sure. I'll paraphrase it pretty much. Logan just basically said, I'm really excited for you guys to be bringing these characters to life. Um, I could not imagine a more perfect Percy Jackson than Walker, which I, I 
fully agree with. I, he was like, I hope you enjoy eating blue food for like the next many, many years to come or something like that, which meant a lot for multiple reasons. Number one, I know a lot of people have been wanting like Logan Lerman to like say something about the show or have some sort of involvement in the show. There was the whole Logan Lerman being Poseidon fan cast that was going around for a while. Um, a lot of people now want Logan Lerman to be Paul Blofus in later seasons. So it's huge just because a lot of people wanted him to at least say something about the show. But it's also a big deal because now Logan Lerman knows about Blue Food and Percy Jackson. There's an interview clip from back when the movie was coming out. It was like him and the cast. It was like, I think the, the trio from the movie, like reading questions. And one of the questions was like, do you guys like Blue Food? And all of them were like, what? Okay, what? What's that even mean? I don't even know what that question, like, what a weird question. <laughs> so that was like a big deal because blue food is a very important part of Percy Jackson. And uh, people were like, what do you mean you don't know anything about the blue food? You're playing Percy Jackson. But he has corrected his mistake and he is now forgiven. But yeah, so that about does it for this really quick sort of update video for Percy Jackson. Like I said, the show comes out in a week. So crazy. You guys can expect a lot of content from me as the show comes out. I'll have reactions to the episodes. I'll either post those on here or on TikTok. They're 100% gonna be on TikTok, so make sure you follow me over there. They might come to YouTube though. And after every episode, you can expect like a sort of review breakdown, explaining like what's going on in the show and talking about it and stuff. So you guys can definitely look out for all of those. If this is the first Percy Jackson video of mine that you're watching, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post a lot of Percy Jackson stuff. I have a playlist on my channel of all my Percy Jackson videos that you can go and watch. I also recommend that you follow me on all my other social medias. I post a lot about Percy Jackson over there. I'm in the middle of a series on my TikTok called um, Things the Percy Jackson Movies Got Wrong and How You Can Expect the Show to Fix Them. And yes, that is a very long, 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 long series because the movie got a lot of things wrong. So you guys can go and check that out. It's also on my Instagram if you don't have TikTok. And then I tweet a lot about Percy Jackson. So you can follow me on Twitter as well. Comment down below if you guys are excited for the show. If you're going to be watching, I'm almost scared for the show to come out because like once it's over, what, am, what do I do then? What am I supposed to make YouTube videos about once this show is over? I guess I'll make a video when season two gets announced. <laughs> But yeah, that about does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.